we are back with another lesson for today we are in our mother tongue lesson so remember teacher meg said that mother tongue is when we speak tagalog right but because many of you are not yet used to speaking in tagalog we will do it in english and insert the tagalog words or if i need to say it in tagalog then I will go back and translate it to English also for you, okay? So let us begin by learning about something really interesting. Our lesson for today is about ang aking kapaligiran. Okay, it's very hard to say. Can you say Kapaligiran. Let's say it slowly. Say ka, pa, li, gi, ran. Kapaligiran. <laughs> That's okay if your tongue gets all twisted up. That's fine. In English, that is called my surroundings or the things around you, the nature around you. Okay, so in the picture, you can see flowers and butterflies. Let's see what's next. Okay, there we go. So if you will see the picture, if you can see the picture already, it looks very, very beautiful, right? Can you tell me what you can see in that picture? Okay, now I'm going to tell you what I can see, and I want you to touch it on the screen. Are you ready? Okay, I see some trees. Can you touch the trees? Very good. I see some flowers. Can you touch the flowers? Good job. I can see a frog. Can you find the frog? Okay, very good. I can see some duck, some a duck and her ducklings. Can you touch that? Very good. I can even see a dragonfly. Very good job. Okay, this world, this surroundings in the picture looks so beautiful. Okay, now we will be learning about the three main parts that make up our surroundings. And the first one is the tree. Can you say tree? Very good. Now, tree is an English word. To teach you the Tagalog of tree, you have to say puno. Puno. Can you repeat that? Puno. Very good. Puno means tree. Okay. So, here are some other examples of puno that we have and we can see depending on where we are. Some of them have weird shapes, but if you look outside and look at the different kinds of puno, you will also see that they have different kinds of shape. Some of their leaves are long, some of their leaves are short, some are round, some are thin, some are fat. All different kinds of puno. And here are some more examples of puno. Some punos, they shed their leaves during a certain season. Some punos have green leaves all the time. So each puno is different. And you have to match the puno to a specific place. For example, you cannot put a coconut tree in a place where there is snow. Okay, so that's what I mean. Uh, certain kinds of puno need to be in specific places. So one more time, say puno. One more time, puno. Okay, what's puno for? Tree. Good job. Let's see what's next. Bulaklak. In English, we call this flower. But in Tagalog, we say bulaklak. Bulaklak. Now, that's another tongue twister, so let's say it slowly. Bu, lak, lak. Very good. Bu, lak, lak. There you go. Bu, lak, lak. Okay. Bu, lak, laks make our surroundings look beautiful because they have different colors and different sizes and different shapes. 
without the bulaklak, our world will not be very colorful, right? The bulaklak makes it colorful. There are many kinds and many colors of bulaklak. And we use them in different ways to decorate, to give to special people on their birthday, maybe. We give it to make people happy, right? Those are some of the uses for bulaklak. Okay, one more time. Say bulaklak. What's bulaklak for? Flower. Very good. You're learning Tagalog. See, you can do it. Next, the last element that makes up our surroundings is the animals. Yes, animals. What is the Tagalog word for animals? You say, hayok. Hayok. Very good. One more time. Hayok. Okay. We have many kinds of hayok around the world. These pictures that you can see on your screen mostly are hayops that you can find in the jungle, right? Or maybe in the wild, okay? These kind of hayop are, can be found in the wild, in the jungle, and in the zoo also. So you can see there a giraffe, an elephant, a zebra, a rhinoceros, a lion, an antelope, a monkey, right? Those kinds of hayop. This next set of hayop are usually found in the farm. Okay, so you can see there a cow, sheep, donkey, uh, what else? Goat, a pig, a chicken, a duck, a chick, right? Those kinds of hayop are found in the farm. So one more time, say hayop, hayop. Very good job. Hayop stands for animal. Good job. So let's review before we go to our game, a short game that teacher Meg prepared. So first we have puno, puno. Next, we have bulaklak, bulaklak. Next, we have hayop, hayop. Okay, time for our game. Now, teacher Meg is going to show some pictures and you have to say whether it is, you have to say it in Tagalog, okay? Whether it is a puno, whether it is a bulaklak, or whether it is a hayop. Okay, in English, this one is gonna be an easy lesson, but our main purpose here is to help you learn to speak Tagalog, even though little by little, okay? So again, uno, bulaklak, and hayop. What is this? Very good, it is a bulaklak. Ooh, what is this? Good job. It is a puno. What is this? Very good. Hayo. You have to classify, huh? What's this? That long word. What's that? Bulaklak. Very good. Another? Puno. Okay. Ooh, what's this? Hayop. Very good. What is this? Bulaklak. This one? Puno. Very good. And the last one? Very good. Hayop. Okay. Now, we have learned about the hayop. We have learned about the puno and the bulaklak. Now, teacher Meg wants to ask you, what is the man doing in the picture? Yes, he's throwing garbage. In Tagalog, we say, nagtatapon ng basura. Do you think it's a good action or a bad action? You are right. It is not a good action. Look at this picture. What happened to the puno? And what happened to the bulaklak? 
they have been cut down. What about this picture? Look at that poor Hayop. Why is he running away? Because the boy wants to hurt him. Oh no, Jesus made the beautiful Bulaklak, the tall and strong Puno, and the cute Hayop for all of us to enjoy. And one way that we can show Jesus that we are thankful for them is to take care of them. I hope you enjoyed our lesson today and you learned something new. For your activity, I want you to color very, very nicely that beautiful kapaligiran picture. And for your next worksheet, I want you to draw or you may cut out and paste an example of a bulaklak, an example of a puno, and an example of a hayo. Okay. Good job for today, Kinder 2. Let's see what's next.